Hello everyone, my name is Oishiki. At first I would like to say that please kindly subscribe my channel. So today I am going to read part 9 of Oliver Twist. Written by a very famous writer that is Charles Dickens. And yes, I would also like to inform that the ones who want to watch Oliver Twist part 8. They can get the video link from description box. So now let's begin with our story. Kindness and a Disappointment When Oliver awoke, it was morning and he was lying in a ditch where Bill Sykes had left him. Bill and other robbers were nowhere to be seen for they had all managed to run away and had hurried back to London. Oliver felt weak and the shawl Bill had tied round his arm was soaked with blood. With a tremendous effort, he struggled to his feet and staggered along until he reached a road. A short way on, he came to a house. With a flicker of fear, he realized that it was the very house where the robbery had been attempted the previous night. Oliver wanted to run away, but his strength faded him. Inside, the servants heard a noise. When they opened the front door, one of them, Mr. Giles, recognized Oliver. Here's the thief. I shoot him, he shouted. Giles, a soft voice whispered from the top of the stairs. Hush, or... You will frighten my aunt. It was a young girl, very slender and sweet-faced, with kind, deep blue eyes. She came quickly down the stairs and looked at Oliver, who had been carried inside and was lying on the hall floor. Oh! The poor young little fellow, the girl exclaimed. Carry him upstairs, Giles. Gently now, be careful. The young lady, whose name was Rose, ordered the doctor to be brought. The bullet the doctor had discovered had broken Oliver's arm. The injury was not serious, but it would be a long time before the arm mended and Oliver felt well again. Rose, her aunt, Mrs. Malley, the doctor whose name was Lucebird, and all the servants, even Giles were very kind and gentle towards Oliver. Oliver was very grateful for his good fortune, but all the same time, he wanted more than anything was to return to London and find Mr. Brownlow. Dr. Lucebird offered to take Oliver to London in a carriage. When they reached the street where Mr. Brownlow lived, Oliver spotted the house at once. That one, there, the white house, he cried, pointing excitedly. But Oliver's excitement soon faded, for the house was all shut up and there 
was a notice outside saying too late. Dr. Luzburn sent his coachman next door to make inquiries and he returned with the sad news that Mr. Brownlow had gone away six weeks previously far across Atlantic Ocean to the West Indies. Oliver burst into tears. It was all too terrible. Mr. Brownlow must have left thinking Oliver was a deceitful, dishonest and a little witch. Now he would never learn the truth. So story ends here. In my next video, I am going to read part 10 that is a curious tale. If you liked my today's video, then please like and comment my video. And also subscribe my channel to listen to more such stories. And also to follow all my videos regularly. And don't forget to click on the bell icon. Thank you.